Saturday morning, time for us to kick off the experts program. And our tech expert, Luis Alvarez, CEO of the Alvarez Technology Group, gets things going for us here on Power Talk Radio. Good morning, Luis. Good morning, Mark. How are you today? Doing pretty good. Well, we have a, a lot of talk about hacks today on the program. A little later on, Nan Lesnick is going to talk about uh, net security and hacks. She's not trying to take your business, by the way. Um, <laughs> she's specifically reaching out to folks over 60 with investments that don't pay a lot of attention to net security. And that's a big part of her group there. Well, I don't mind her uh, talking about it because uh, we, it, it's a topic that is no one person can really dominate. There's so much to it. Protecting yourself, protecting your identity, protecting your financial well-being is a full-time job in some cases. Yes, it so is. I, I think the more we all talk about it, the more aware we are. And just this past week, we had that huge Capital One hack, which was unusual in a lot of ways. And we'll talk about that in, in a little bit. But it uh, affected about $100 million people in the United States and in, in you know some in Canada as well as outside the United States but it was a, a pretty devastating do- download of data which included things like bank account numbers credit card obviously you know, credit card numbers things like that and it, it, it puts a whole new spin on what's in your wallet which is yes. capital one's uh, catchphrase because uh, it, it's really given them a black eye yeah now as I read the story it was a 33 year old woman from Seattle who apparently did this hack on purpose and left a trail that led to her her because she was like this ad hoc white hat hacker, so she claims to be. I just want them to know how vulnerable their system is. Do you buy it? Yeah, no, not at all. <laughs> the lady named Paige Thompson is a well known person in the hacking community. She uses a uh, nom de plume, as we like to say, that doesn't include her name. Erratic is what she uses, and, and they found her trolling. Well, that's not reassuring. Them. No, it's not. When somebody calls themselves erratic, that's, that's self identification at a different level. But uh, um, she was in a lot of these communities where uh, hackers tend to, to congregate. And some of them are there to learn from each other and, pr- and learn how to protect their clients and, and offer good advice. So while it may sound noble, what she did was outright criminal act. She had access to this database that Capital One maintained because she worked at a vendor that supported that database. So she was the ultimate insider. Think of her as the Edward Snowden of the private sector mm-hmm. uh, where she had access to not just the Capital One, there's there's um, suspicions and indications that she had access to a number of other companies that she was able to download information from because she had, as a an insider who was a system administrator, she had certain privileges within those systems that normal technicians or, or normal people wouldn't have. And she was able to download all this data and then post it available through these um, hacker channels to other people as a way to boast that she was able to do it. And she wasn't trying to sell the information, that that would have been a a whole different channel that she would have been on and she would have been definitely much more cautious about that but she was you know openly boasting about being able to do these things and offering up the information that she took as proof that she was able to download that information Mm -hmm. do we know that uh, she has done anything with this information has she attempted to sell it on the dark web have investigators been able to figure out what she's done with the steel not yet we know that she posted it openly so other people were able to download the information and that's why Capital One is offering to some identity protection services to their cardholders because it wasn't like she downloaded it and stored it and saved it and it was recovered before it could be uh, disseminated. She actually took uh, subsets of the information and posted it on these uh, sites for others to download. So that information is out there in the wild. Whether she went on the dark web and tried to sell it is still an open question. Needless to say, she's in, incarcerated right now and being interrogated, so we'll learn more over time. But uh, if you're a Capital One card holder, yes. you really need to take some precautions to make sure that things are not going to be compromised, that your credit isn't going to be compromised, that your identity isn't going to be compromised, that, and that you don't overreact, though, and get caught up in some of the scams that inevitably come out of these kind of things. So what should I do? Because I'm a Capital One card holder, so where do I go to make sure that you know my data hasn't been used for some nefarious purpose? Well, the first thing you should do is you should log into your Capital One account online or through the app and make sure that everything looks copacetic, that there's nothing in there that looks suspicious or that, you know, there are transactions in there that you know you didn't instigate. And if, if you do find things like that, then you need to contact Capital One right away to get their assistance. Hmm. And by the way, when you call Capital One or any financial institution, use the number on the back of the credit card. Don't fall for some of the scams that you'll see some emails coming across that 
it'll say, hey, this is a Capital One alert. Please call us at this number so that we can uh, get your situation rectified. But the number they give you is a number to some um, some place in Eastern Europe exactly. or the Far it's East. A VOP, <laughs> it's a VOIP line into the Ukraine. Yeah, exactly. Even when you do get a legitimate email from your credit card company or your financial institution, always use the, the number that you know or that it's on the back of the credit card right. rather than the number that they send. Well, Lewis, uh, about a month ago, let me, let me mention this. About okay. Now, when did she conduct the hack? That's still an open question. Okay. Sometime in the last 60 days or so. All right, because a little over a month ago, I noticed a charge on my Capital One account over $800 for a video system. What the heck? I've never bought anything like this. Called Capital One, told them, hey, this isn't mine, da, 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 da. And they took it off, and they said, well, you know, it looks like somehow someone got hold of your number and used it, and they issued me a new card. So uh, maybe I was part of this breach then. Already. You could have been. The information has been out there in the wild for a while, going back into June. So chances are that uh, what happened to you is an indication of what's happening to a lot of people. So that's why you need to check your account and change your password to those login accounts, including your app on your phone, because some of those passwords may have been compromised as well. Good point. What else can we do? Well, the other thing you should do is contact the credit bureaus like Equifax, Experian, and TransUnion and ask them to freeze your credit credit account. And what that does is it means that no new credit cards or loans or anything can happen on those on using your name and social security number without you getting notified. Because the other part of this is that not only was the credit card information stolen, but all of the uh, information about you as a person could have been taken as well. So your address, your phone number, your social security number, all the things that are necessary for somebody to pretend to be you walk into a bank or go online now because there's so many online banking institutions and say, hey, yeah, I want to apply for a loan. And once somebody does that, the first thing that happens is that entity will check with one of the big three credit reporting companies to see what your credit looks like. And by freezing your credit account, it keeps them from being able to do anything other than notifying you that there's a transaction. Do you approve it or not approve it? And it's a free service. It got to look up the the phone numbers for Experian, Equifax, and and TransUnion. But once you make that happen, then they won't unfreeze it until you call them back and say that you want to unfreeze it. Um, And typically, there's a little short delay, usually like uh, three or four days when you want to unfreeze it. So be aware of that in case you really do have like a a loan pending or something else out there. But if you want to be extra cautious, that's another thing you can do. And watch out for scams. This is just like any notable circumstance out in the the world. This is a, a chance for hackers and bad guys to spread a lot of disinformation and make people do things that they wouldn't normally do, either calling them, saying, I'm calling from Capital one, just want to make sure that you know that we're taking care of you. But just to confirm that I have all your information, can I get your credit card number, your uh. login ID, and your password? And before you know it, you know, people are very trusting. They'll get a call and they'll say, well, I do have that Capital One card. And, and you know, I did hear about that. So let me give this nice person all my information oh, boy. so they can take care of me. And then you have other people that, that take advantage of folks by making them sign up for services that cost them money that you're going to get free. Capital One is going to make available to all of their folks a monitoring service that you might normally have to pay for, but now Capital One is going to pick up the the tab just like Equifax did when that hack happened. So you don't have to buy those services. They're going to be available to you for free. Here's another thing, Lewis, people should think about. And just think about this logically, okay? A hundred million accounts are compromised. Now, how on earth could Capital One call all 100 million customers? Customers exactly. and talk to them and say, hey, but think about it that way. There is no way humanly possible for them to call each and every person. So if you get a call from someone saying they're from Capital One, it's got to be a scam. There's just no yep. way it can be anything but a scam because the numbers just don't work. Yeah. And, and if you do get a call, what I would do is hang up, tell that person politely that you're going to call in yourself and then call that number that you know is the Capital One number and ask for customer service and see if they actually are calling you. Right. And like you pointed out, the chances are they're going to say, no, you know, no, ma'am, I'm sorry. You know, we, we can't call everybody or you'll be notified by mail. And that's another thing that these financial institutions tend to do rather than communicating these kind of things via email, they'll send you a paper letter that comes to your address so that you know it's from them. Correct. It's legit. Yeah. Because they don't want to be part of, of a bigger problem of getting you even more embroiled in, in uh, compromising your identity. Right. And the hacker aren't going to send out 100 million pieces of mail at at 50 cents a stamp. Think about it. 
<laughs> okay. The, 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 yeah, the secret to successful hacking is to spend as, as little as possible to make as much as possible. Exactly. So that sounds like too expensive a proposition. For that. Great advice from Luis Alvarez this morning, all about net security, keeping yourself safe online. And it's the Alvarez Technology Group, AlvarezTG.com, at AlvarezTG, the Twitter handle. Luis, the toll-free number for the I-Team. Give us a call at 866-78-I-Team. That's 866-784-8326.